right, we're back with part three here at Blue Glow Electronics on how to uh, kind of rebuild or convert a console amplifier. I thought I'd show you something here. This is uh, kind of the uh, spoils of my work here, replacing the uh, the resistors here. It's about 20 or so resistors and about six capacitors. Doesn't look like a lot laying on the bench here, uh, as you can see. Doesn't look like a lot there, but that was about three and a half hours of labor to do it right. It's uh, Some of these things are kind of tedious and take some time to do it right, so uh, just don't think you're going to jump in here and do that in 30 minutes. Uh, it's got a little bit of time associated with it. Before we get too far into this, I thought I'd address a couple things that people make, people make comments on the videos I've made thus far. One, somebody kind of said, hey, Mark, don't forget, these. Uh, most of these little amplifiers are um, only 8 to 10 watts. And, uh, you know, with today's modern speakers that might not be all that efficient, uh, these things may not be all that great for everyone. And I kind of replied, yeah, I, I can uh, concur with that statement that, um, you know, this one at best might be, uh, you know, uh, 10, 14 watt type scenario here. And, um, but you know, for a bedroom or an office like I'm in, these things would do absolutely great. Or if you had a bigger room, uh, you just need some efficient speakers, um, something above, you know, 92 or so dB uh, per watt per meter. Um, you know, a good set of clips, uh, KG4s or um, you know, something along those lines would make a great set of speakers. Um, for one of these amps, even without a lot of power. And the second statement was, when I had shown here how to attach a, um, a resistor to a tag or a uh, lead point, and um, I had kind of wrapped the wire around, somebody said, hey, you really don't have to do that. And I, I agree, I do a lot of times. I do what they call simply just a little, uh, little J-hook here. So you would take the end of the wire wherever you've, you probably snip it off to the right length you need. And you just grab it and kind of bend it around one time like this. And you want to leave it pointed open and not pointed closed. Uh, just a little bit like that right there. Um, and then you just come down and as you can see here, like you would hook it then around a point. Um, as you can see, let me see if I can zoom in just a little bit more. Uh, you'd hook it around a point like this right here, and then all you've got to do is come along with the pliers and kind of uh, uh, squeeze it closed like that right there, and then solder it. So I do an awful lot of that. A lot of these were done that way. I uh, just want to point that out. And as I pointed out in the last video, I've, I've replaced everything that's not connected to a capacitor, and I'm wanting to hold off on those until we've uh, got the uh, other components mounted in here. So let's get this thing into the shop in there and uh, get to drilling. Okay, so I've kind of laid out the components here we're going to want to put in it. I want to put just a plain old IEC connector, and the main reason I'm going to do that instead of just drilling a hole and running a wire through it and putting a grommet is I've got this great big hole here already that I can't think of anything that would really cover up. But if you'll notice, if we punch that thing out, it's going to be about darn perfect right there for, um, for putting an IEC connector in. And uh, second up, I'm going to use a fuse holder here. And uh, if you notice, this is an old vintage fuse holder, not a brand new one. I like to salvage stuff like this off of old equipment and uh, and, and use something. Because I tell you, this thing's made a hundred times better than anything you can buy today. Then just got a set of uh, gold-plated um, you know, RCA input jacks. And we're going to put on it some... Uh, some banana plug output jacks here um, for the uh, for the uh, speaker connection. So we'll start out by kind of laying everything out and figuring out where we want it to go. Probably draw a line down the middle of this thing with a uh, you know a pencil and a ruler and get us a center point and then start marking things off equal distance how we want them and then we can drill this thing out. Maybe a little bit hard to see here, but uh, just drew a pencil line right down the middle of this thing. And it is probably hard to see, but um, good thing about pencil, you can uh, erase it right off when you're done. Okay, so you kind of got to look at the internal clearances. Like I know here, this hole, this thing's going to go on the inside. I've got plenty of room here to play around with. And then the fuse, well, I'd like to put the fuse right here, but uh, that won't work because I'm going to be buttoned up into that transformer. But I notice over here, there's some dead space in between... Um, Right here and here, it's a perfect place for the fuse, and it keeps all your power supply line, um, power supply feed lines on this side of the amplifier and away from your uh, 
more sensitive end down here on this side. So um, that's the route we're going to go. Okay, I'm going to spare you all the details of actually drilling out this chassis. Um, if you want an in-depth version of that um, on my how to build a single-ended amplifier um, video series, I've got a long video, about an hour long, of me drilling chassis, and you can go watch to do that. If you want the short version, I use a combination of uh, regular drill bits here to start pilot holes. Then I come along with these uh, little uh, stepper bits here that uh, kind of chew out um, spaces. In some cases I use, uh, like this one's an IAC socket uh, socket punch, and for tube, uh, tube sockets I use uh, just little round regular punches. But uh, watch that video if you want to see how to drill out chassis. But it's just a combination of drilling a pilot hole then using one of these to step to the size you want. Pretty simple stuff. And as you can see here, I use this little stepper bit, um, went down into the chassis to the point that this thing drops right down in there and I've got a nice fuse hole. Um, sometimes you want to use a little uh, metal reamer like this that you kind of work around the, uh, the hole here and uh, kind of reams out any rough edges on them. Okay, I'm just kind of marking out along the edge here. There was an existing hole here so I wanted to use it. And so I measured over about as far as I needed, I thought, to keep these things uh, a good distance apart. And kind of marked that off, and those were 23 centimeters apart. So I came over a little bit, and I put two more, and I put those 23 centimeters apart. And then I kind of measured the same distance here, and put two more 23 centimeters apart here for the RCA jacks. And uh, really what you want to do now at this point, like this uh, this little jack here has this sleeve that goes with it. And if you notice, this sleeve is designed to go through the chassis. So you want to drill this thing out until that, that little uh, grommet there slides right in and tight uh, through the chassis. <clears throat> Same on this one here, you've got this little white uh, washer right here and it's got a little edge on it and you're going to want to drill it out until that little edge drops right in there. Uh, but you kind of get the idea here, just uh, marking it off, putting drilling uh, pilot holes using just a regular old uh, small drill bit here and then using a stepper bit to uh, kind of ream these things out to the size you need. And just in case you're wondering, this is just a standard Craftsman uh, um, table chop drill here. The only thing I've done different to it is down here on the uh, swinging platter here. I have mounted a, uh, a little bit larger platter to make it easier um, to hold a large amplifier or something versus the little square platter that was normally mounted under there. But this is a it's an $89 drill at Sears or um, um, Lowe's or Home Depot or whatnot. And as you can see, I used a uh, square chassis punch here and punched out the um, oops punched out the little chunk of metal there that for the IC connector may have to nibble that just a little bit to get it perfect sometimes. Uh, same as I'm going to have to, on the back side of these, I'm going to have to deburr these things a little bit. You can see they're really sharp here. Sometimes I use the little deburring tool, but sometimes it's hard to come from the inside out when you're trying to use the tool in here um, up against these components. So sometimes I'll, I'll uh, you can see here, it's kind of tough sometimes with trying to use that. Uh, sometimes I'll just use a Dremel with a uh, kind of a grinding wheel on it to get rid of those. but. You kind of get the idea. If you don't have a punch like this, you could uh, you could nibble that thing out with a, just a hand nibbler or an air nibbler. A couple different ways to go about it, but um, nothing that you can't go to your local uh, Home Depot or Lowe's and buy the parts to do. Um, we're kind of a shade tree shop as it comes to uh, machine work around here. All right, we got it all drilled out. Got the uh, fuse holder right here. Little thing will drop right in beautifully. We've got the IC connector here. Got a little, um, let's see, that'll be right channel, left channel, um, two RCA jacks. I'm uh, pretty darn happy with how this thing turned out. It's going to look nice uh, when we get it done here. Okay, well, I've got it on here on the bench. I've got two more things to do to it. Um, the first one is I've got to put a power switch somewhere on this thing on the front of it. Let me show you what I use for those. Use these little round flip switches. Um, they take a three-quarter inch hole and then you have to cut a little notch with a Dremel um, on one side. And um, really nice. These things are like two bucks. And the other thing I was going to show you I'm going to do to it. So 
You notice how all these feet here are on the outside of this amp kind of pointing out and it gives it a weird look. I'm going to drill out or grind off all the rivets here on the inside so that these feet all come off. And then I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to turn it around on the inside and just use two bolts to uh, hold it on. And then I've got a, uh, you know, it's coming on the inside here with a hole, I can put a, a foot in it right there. And it gives it a nice little place to, uh, to for this thing to sit on. Um, and it gets rid of these uh, kind of feet sticking on the outer part of the chassis. As you can see here, I just used a, uh, a plain old Dremel, went on the inside here, ground the heads of those nuts off with a uh, little emery wheel. This thing popped right off. I'll have to pop the, uh, the little rivets out of that, but then I can turn this around and I can go back and use the exact same holes and I can put two uh, nice uh, screws in there and hold that on the inside and then that gives me a perfect place to mount a foot to. Okay, we've got it in here on the bench now. Got a nice little uh, power switch here, rocker switch. And uh, kept all the power stuff on one side of this unit and then kind of all the amplification on the other end. And uh, we're going to get busy putting some parts in it. Alright, we've got it all mounted in here. Uh, the two RCA jacks, four uh, banana speaker plug jacks, the IAC connector and the fuse holder as well as the uh, little rocker switch here for power. Um, as you can see here, it looks nice and neat on the back of this thing. Uh, I'm pretty happy with how that's turned out. Now what I'm going to have to deal with is replacing this capacitor and these capacitors over here um, somewhere in this <laughs> in this vicinity here with all this uh, crowdedness. A lot of the room starts disappearing once you start putting uh, you know these jacks and terminal connections, fuse holders and whatnot in these things. All right, one thing I was observing here is um, this is a um, you know a four section multi cap right here. One of the sections is not even used anymore. The red wire that went to it came over here and plugged into the Molex plug, and so we don't even need it. And if, if without the red wire there, um, we also don't need this resistor that's uh, that's kind of tied to it. So. Um, we can actually cut it out of the circuit at this point. It's just less that we have to replace now um, at this point. The blue here, as you notice, can just go out of the way. Don't need that. Three sections to replace. Okay, another little observation I've had here is this resistor here and this diode both tie down to the lug here on this capacitor. And this capacitor is not grounded. If you'll notice, it's floating. Um, because the negative side of it actually ties back over here off of this uh, terminal right here on this capacitor. And the, um, the positive side, both of these wires end up going to the uh, center taps of the output transformers, which ultimately feed the plates on these 6BQ5s. So I'm going to end up putting a terminal strip of some sort right here and using this little hole that was already here in the amp. And I can just tie between those two and um, and then we can wire up a capacitor off of that terminal strip. Okay, I'm working on mounting a grounding, I mean a, uh, a terminal strip here um, that'll go from this point down here to this point here. Believe it or not, it was two existing holes. Um, it'll be perfect for me to kind of tag between this and over here and mount the capacitors on this. But one thing I'm doing here, if you'll notice, I used a uh, Dremel tool here and uh, ground off uh, with a grinding wheel here ground off any um, of the anodized coating so that I get a good ground on this uh, lug right here because I'm going to use this lug as a ground point. And I haven't soldered them yet, I just plugged them in here, but um, I'm going to end up mounting two capacitors here like this um, into that terminal strip. And these will be the uh, 120 microfarad at 450 and the 100 at um, 450. The originals were at 200, but I don't have any laying around. And then I've got to find a place here for the 247s at 450. And originally they were 40 at 350. So um, I'll end up with just a little more capacitance here at the 47, but it'll work out just fine. Okay, one thing I did here was I uh, soldered this to the chassis, this little tab right here, uh, to make sure we got a good ground connection. And I've also a little thin wire right here in between these two on this side, a little hard to see. But I've soldered this lug to this lug so that both of these are at ground potential. 
Okay, so I've got this one. Um, remember, this one is ground. It's bridged over to this one. I've got the negative side of this capacitor in here. And then I've also bridged all three of these together with a piece of wire right along the edge here. And the reason for that now is as I mount this in here, then I will basically have tied the positive of this capacitor to the negative of this capacitor. And it also gives me a lug right here in the middle that I can attach some things to. And it's kind of hard to tell by looking at this thing. But that's what was originally done. So you've got this capacitor right here that one side of it goes to ground just like this. But the positive side of this one actually feeds over here and goes to the outer part of the can right here on this capacitor. And then the um, positive part of this can, which will end up being this little piece down here, um, is what connects to this resistor, this diode, and ultimately back to the uh, center taps here on the transformer. So um, I'm kind of mimicking that same scenario between these two caps. And you can actually see it here on the schematic. So I'm going to zoom in on it and get the wires out of the way. Yeah, it's right here. So you've got this point here where you've got a 120 microfarad capacitor between ground and this point where you're actually uh, originally you were pulling off of that point for some things right here um, but we don't need that so you're really just stacking two capacitors here um, and then we're going to feed off of this top part of this one here um, into several different places here into the amplifier so I hope that makes sense for you okay and as you can see here, I jump her between this little end here and this place. It's because I don't have anywhere here to hook wire to, because, and so jumpering these gives me another terminal right here that I can hook to. So really for this whole capacitor setup, one end's going to ground. I'm kind of stacking two of them. I'm pulling off the middle right here for one piece, and I'm pulling off the other piece right here. Um, the other end of the positive here. So I actually like how this whole little thing turned out. One little terminal strip. And uh, this thing looks uh, pretty nice and neat in the amp here. It's mounted really good and solid. Uh, I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. I thought I'd show you a tip. I cut this little diode loose right here. And I'm trying to unsolder this from this board. And the way these things are from this tag, these things are hard because the solder solder's old and dried and uh, just kind of hard to get it loose. But a tip I'll show you is even though you're trying to unsolder it, Put a little bit of fresh solder on there and what it does is it allows the heat to flow via that solder and um, really makes it easy then to, uh, to kind of go around and, and remove stuff because you got fresh solder that's flowing which is really taking the heat along with it and that thing came right off easily that way. Um, much harder if you try to do it without some new fresh solder on it. Okay, as you can see, I soldered the resistor in here coming off of this lead. The diode, I uh, kind of brought it over, tagged it onto the side of that. But I still got to get this resistor tied down here to the same point as these others. And I always use um, um, silver wire, Teflon coated P PTFE wire, which requires a special, um, as you can see here, heat, um, heat based uh, wire stripper, ther thermal wire stripper. But you can use any old wire and any wire stripper that works for you. Alright, you can see how I got it wired up now. So uh, this goes to the very end of this capacitor, which is actually in series with this capacitor. And, and we've tied off the, uh, the two that go to the center taps on the output transformers, uh, the B+, as well as uh, tied off the end of the diode and this uh, resistor here. And we still got to tie off the things that are down here. Um, here and here, they go to the center point here in between these two capacitors. All right, so now if I study what's left over here, there are two sections on this capacitor left. And by the way, it had this uh, 4700 ohm or 4.7K resistor here between these two. And if you come and look at the schematic, it's this point right here. So, um, you know, between here and here you have this 4.7K and there's two 40 microfarads. We're actually going to put in 47 microfarads at this point. And um, so what, what I've kind of studied and figured out is that this red wire coming off of this 
40 microfarad comes around and comes over here to this point right here. And all it needs to do is go between here and ground. And by the way, this lug right here is a ground lug. So I'm going to try the 47 ohm capacitor between here and here. And then if you come off of this one and follow the orange wire around, it comes to right here. And all it needs to do is go between here and ground. And by the way, this tab is ground. So if I can tie another 4700 ohm resistor right here, then all I have to do is between the two positive leads of these, between this one and this one, I need to tie a new 3 watt um, 4700 ohm resistor. So I can get out of this space over here all together and get rid of all these wires running around. As you can see here, these are uh, some brand new 4700 microfarad, 450 volts. Uh, you know, the original in this thing were 350, but I went ahead and went with the 450. They'll run cooler. Getting them from Mauser, so uh, they're, they're Nikki Cons. I know they're good. A lot of Nikki Cons on eBay are fake, um, so be careful. Um, but I like using what they call radial, which uh, means the two terminals come out of one end. Anytime I'm using a tag strip like this, like I can go right here between this end and this end and mount this capacitor here and it'll work out quite well. And then over here I can turn around and uh, probably go that backwards, but I can mount this right in here and have my 4700 ohm mounted in here. If I'm going between two things, then I'll use an axial capacitor, you know, where the leads come out of both ends of it. But just a tip. Okay, you can see now I've got this 4700 ohm tied off here between this positive lead and if you notice that's where the orange wire went over here to feed and then the negative goes to ground which is this lug right here. Same thing on this one, the negative goes to ground and the positive goes over here so I can now actually remove these wires going over here to feed to this uh, capacitor and I've now got a tie between this positive and this positive with a 4700 ohm resistor. Okay, and I noticed that this little connection here had an orange wire that actually tied over to this point right here, um, which meant this point and this point are at the same potential. So it gave me a good opportunity then to uh, use a, the 4700 ohm, and I used some uh, little Teflon wire sleeving here and I connected um, over here to this lug and over here to this lug and I uh, used the Teflon sleeving in between to, to not have to worry about the uh, the run of the, uh, the resistor here touching against anything. So I think we've got the capacitors all wired up at this point. Um, it's looking pretty good, M much cleaned up, much neater. Got that 4700 on, 4700 on, the 120 here and the other 120, originally these were uh, 40, 40, 100, and 120, and I'm going to go with 40, 40, 120. I think we're fine because um, we're using a solid state power supply in this thing, not tube. The only time you got to be careful putting too much capacitance on a power supply like that is um, you don't want to swamp your, uh, your rectifier tube. They typically have a rated, a uh, stated rating of around 30. Um, microfarads typically. Okay, just a few things left to wire up and I thought I'd show you how to do this properly. So if you look at the back side, so I've got a view here as if you were seeing it from the back, not the front here, um, of this IAC connector. Consider this the front and this the back. If you're looking at the back, um, you know, on the left hand side will be your black wire, your hot, you're going to take that into the fuse holder and then you're going to come out the other side of the fuse holder and you're going to go to your switch and you're going to come out the other side of your switch and you're going to end up going into the power transformer. And your white wire is just going to come around and go to the other lead on your transformer. And the reason you fuse the hot side and not the neutral side here has to do with the kind of the way it's uh, grounded in your, uh, in your, um, your fuse panel. Um, you would always want this fuse to blow before a uh, circuit breaker would flip. As well as you put the switch on the other side of this fuse, because what if something was shorted or a problem inside the switch? Um, you would want that before the fuse, uh, or after the fuse and not before the fuse. So this is the way we're going to lay this thing out. Okay, I took one lead, the black lead of the transformer here, and ran it over to the switch. You'll notice um, one wire here goes straight to the 
to the transformer here. And then I ran a wire from the uh, other side of the switch here straight over to the fuse holder. So basically from here to here. Okay. We've got a wire now going from the, this side of the fuse holder over to here on the, uh, the hot wire. And then the other side of the transformer here, we're coming over to the neutral right here. So we've got this thing all wired up, except for I've got to bring a ground over to this uh, lug here, and I've ground off the oxidation here. So we end up with a true ground, and I'm going to use a little yellow wire. I'm out of green, and I'm um, going to tie that over with, uh, probably use some kind of little um, um, spade lug to go in behind that. So I took my little wire here that I stripped off and I soldered a lug on the end of it and then I'm going to solder the other end right here and uh, screw this lug down underneath this uh, spot. And as you can see, got it connected. We're all wired up from a power standpoint at this point. Just going to tuck these out of the way a little bit down in here and probably zip tie them down a little better. So that's all out of the way and nothing's uh, all things are flush here. And up next, I've got to wire up these uh, input and output jacks on the, uh, whoops, input and output jacks. Okay, I basically rerouted the wires that went over here to these two lugs, the left and right. And I rerouted them here to the uh, left and right on this, on these two outputs. But if you notice over here, these two grounds are tied together and then they go over here and tie to a ground and they're also tied here to a ground point. Um, I want to get a ground a little closer for these than running way back over there. So I'm going to take one of these holes right here in the amplifier and kind of clean off the oxidation on the chassis and uh, tighten down a, uh, a ground lug right here that I can tie both of these off to. And you can see right here, I picked this spot and I've cleaned off the oxidation. And we got a ground lug um, mounted in down here, soldered to the chassis, and then a little purple wire from the ground of both of these down to the chassis. So everything's solid as a rock. All right, we've tied to the uh, two inputs here, um, left and right, and uh, left and right here. And we've also taken the tabs between these two here and brought them over with a purple wire and grounded them where we grounded the uh, speaker jacks here. I think we are good to go at this point. We're going to test this thing out. Okay, before I power something up, I always like to give it a good once-over visual inspection beginning to end. Because sometimes you can snip a wire and a piece of wire falls down and gets across some leads or some solder drops. Um, and you just want to kind of give it a good once over visual look, make sure nothing's touching that shouldn't be, um, so on and so forth. Once you get that done, you're going to want to make sure you bring this thing up on a variac the first time. So that's what we're going to do. All right, one thing I forgot, uh, and I went and added it. I always, on a vintage unit like this, I always put a thermistor. This is a CL70, a CL80 would also work. Um, but I put it in line with the uh, basically the power switch here. Just one of the power leads is all that matters. And it's a, um, a thermistor is kind of a thermal resistor. So this thing will do a couple things. One, it helps the amp slow start just a little bit. Brings the filaments up a little slower on the tubes. And two, it will drop the overall voltage about a voltage, volt or maybe a little more. Um, which helps a little bit with today's, um, you know, 120 volts when um, on the line voltage when these things were really designed for about 110 volts. It helps uh, a little bit with your heaters because a lot of times filaments on these things um, at 120 volts will start getting up to around 7 volts instead of, uh, instead of the 6.3 volts they were originally designed for. Let's get this thing powering up on the Variac, and um, I'm also going to hook some meters to it because I want to watch it come up, watch the voltages. And I'm first going to power it up without the tubes in it because this thing has a solid state power supply. I want to see, I want to make sure before I put the tubes in this thing that the, uh, the power supply is working well and we're getting the right filament voltages, things of that nature. Okay, on the left voltmeter over here, I've got this connected to the B plus, and then the negative of it I've got on ground. And then this little meter here, I've got, I'm sorry, this one's the one I've got going to the B plus in the ground. 
this one I've got going to the two filament uh, wire windings uh, to see what's going on. And I'm going to start this thing out and um, turn it on here with zero volts. There we go. And we'll start bringing it up. And you notice here, I'm starting to see just a few millivolts here of heater um, filament voltage coming out of this thing. And it's too low for my little kilowatt meter to read. But I've already got 33 volts over here coming out on the B plus right here. And let's see, that's up to about, what is that, 40 volts on the uh, AC input. And we're at 2.1 volts AC here and about 113 volts here. So we'll keep bringing this thing up. That's about uh, 52 volts. That's 62 volts. One thing I want to talk about for a minute. I did this whole amplifier beginning to end <laughs> um, without testing along the way. And that's just because I feel pretty confident in what I'm doing and I've done a lot of this over the years. You might would have wanted to bring this amplifier up in its original state and see if it worked. And then if it did, just start replacing a few components at a time along the way. That way if you had a problem, you would know really quickly where the problem lies. If I have a problem, you know, it could be anywhere in any of this, um, but I just feel confident in my ability to chase that down, whereas uh, you might want to take it piece by piece if you're fairly new to this stuff. And let's see here. I'm just talking in between these things because I like to bring it up a little bit slow. That's about 80 volts. We're at 4.8 volts AC on the filaments, and we're at 238 volts on the B+. And keep in mind, this is no load B+, there's no tubes in it, so it'll end up showing a little high. That's up to 96 volts. We're up to 110 volts right there, and we're at 6.5. See what I mean? We're running a little higher than the, the 6.3. And we're at 326 volts. And if I read on the schematic right here, it's saying 310 volts right here, so the unloaded value and I'm just gonna stop right there. That's it that's at 115 volts or so. Let's see. Yeah it's at 115. We're up to 6.8. Uh, not so great on the life of the filaments when you're running like that, but uh, it's not a lot you can do. You can run this thing on a on a variac or a small little bucking transformer that would help bring the voltage down a little bit. So, so far, no loud noises, no smoke, no, uh, <laughs> nothing bad um, when we got high voltage. Uh, let's, let's put some tubes in this thing and see how it does. One thing to keep in mind, I'm going to show you this just for demo purposes here. I've had this thing turned off for about a minute now. And I'm going to put this thing on volt DC right here where you can read it. And I'm going to come over here and connect to this ground uh, where I've got that green wire at. And I want you to see this. Can you see what we've still got here? 190 some volts still sitting on these capacitors. In other words, these things will give you a ride way after they're turned off. And I made a video one time on how to make this little stinger wand that's designed to uh, slowly feed off these capacitors and discharge them without a big bang. Uh, you could have dropped a screwdriver all across there, done the same thing. Got a bunch of sharks, um, sparks and caused a short for your transformer, which is really not good for it. All right, we plugged all our wires into it. Um, we mounted all the tubes in this thing and we have brought it up now. We are using the uh, B and K uh, just signal generator here with a one kilohertz tone. And check it out. Looks absolutely beautiful here. I can flip to the other channel here real quick. And absolutely beautiful. Um, you can hear it here. If you like the sound of a 1 kilohertz tone, that is. And for the real test here, got our iPad. Our iPod. Alright, 
as you can see, I'm mounting these rubber feet here on these little uh, pedals, pedestals I turned around and put in. You can see how I got them mounted here, two screws and uh, nuts on the other side. And they look great on the outside because I use these little black uh, button head screws here. And we're just uh, using these little rubber with metal insert washer uh, feet that I've got right here and mounting them on. Little lamp looks great on the bench. Uh, you can see it. Just give it a little bit of rise with the rubber feet. Give it a little bit of uh, you know, ventilation under there as well. One thing I like, the original tubes in this thing all tested out great. Um, so they're all, as you can see here, silver tone marked. And uh, pretty happy with this thing. Look to God and live. I've been doing some bench testing on this thing with the 8903 uh, with some peat millet software here. And this thing all the way up here, as soon as you hit 40 hertz, I mean, you're minus one, less than minus one dB at that point. And this thing's pretty solid all the way up. Um, you get down minus one dB here at 10K. Then it starts to drop off a little bit. So this thing's lacking just the slightest bit. I mean, you're down two dB at um, 20k so I think it's great uh, for what it is I got a you know, I got a hundred hundred some bucks in this little amplifier and, and honestly it'll keep up with uh, <laughs> with many amps uh, you know ten times its price tag so uh, there's a lot of value in these little console amps and what you can get out of them I'm pretty darn happy with this thing and uh, hope you guys learned something if, if nothing else enjoyed watching the video here all right check it out we put it in play over here on the bench thing looks great here um, you know nice neat little connections in the back I love having uh, IC connectors on amps because it makes it really easy to swap these things in and out here on the board and we got a record here on the turntable uh, this was Grim 10 it was a private release um, some guys I know in a band mm -hmm.
might enjoy that. A uh, little bit from my private label Grimtail Records there. At any rate, we're going to wrap this video up. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, got some more coming. Hopefully I'm going to do this uh, single ended amplifier, finish it up over the holidays here. And I've also got a series I'm going to make on step-up transformers for uh, turntables. So stay tuned everyone. <laughs>